Pipes must be tightened rigorously to avoid having them come apart when they are below the surface. If they were to come apart, there is no way to retrieve the pipes and a new drill hole would have to be started. motor has several speeds, and varying the speed will sometimes help the drilling rather than full speed all the time. slowed after only five feet and the sand becomes more compact. Now that the five and ten foot pieces of drill pipe have been driven into the ground, we are ready to extract the sediment that has come up inside the tube. First we must fill the tube with water to create a hydrostatic pressure which prevents more sand from entering the tube. Then the baler corer tube is inserted inside the drill pipe, which has the flapper valve assembly I showed earlier at the bottom of this tube. We use tape to mark the cable at critical levels so that we know exactly where the bottom of the baler core or sampler is at all times. If the baler got below the bottom of the drill pipe, it would be stuck and the whole pipe would have to be pulled to retrieve it. first measurement will indicate how much compaction occurred as we drilled in the upper 15 feet. Theoretically, the column of sediment in the drill pipe should be equal to the distance that the pipe was driven into the ground. However, especially in the upper part of the hole, the sediment is compacted to as little as one half of its original thickness. As the hole gets deeper, the sand becomes so well packed that it cannot be compacted anymore and full recovery is accomplished. When we're ready to begin sampling, cable is paid out so that the baler core can be worked. You'll remember the flapper valve at the bottom of the baler core. This valve opens and allows sediment to enter the baler core tube when the unit is dropped. On the pull-up, the valve closes and seals in the sediment sample. The action is repeated until we reach the desired depth. You can gauge the speed of sampling by how quickly the first tape mark disappeared. A second piece of tape is applied, and when measured from the first tape piece, will tell us how far we have sampled. You can see that we are able to sample up to a four foot interval with the baler core. We've gone as far as possible with the sampler and we must pull it out of the drill pipe to look at the sample. A 
flapper assembly is unscrewed from the tube, which allows the sample to be displayed for examination. Now there's a nice core. Look at that. It's like a sausage. This view graph shows a line drawing of Sable Island, and what we've illustrated here are the three drill sites that we've obtained samples from, going from west to east, SMH1, which is in a position of the old former channel feeding into Lake Wallace, SS2 and FL3, which are on the margins of former Lake Wallace when it was all open to the ocean. This view graph shows three uh, sediment columns from the three drill holes we just showed on the map. The surface of each of these drill holes is at present day sea level, and the depths here are in meters. In SMH1, we see only sand deposition, uh, this being the position of the former channel to the lagoon. But in the other two drill holes, which are on the present day edge of the former Lake Wallace, we see a series of organic layers in both drill holes, and sort of at the same levels in both, even though they're quite a ways apart. We're able to get carbon-14 dates from these levels, and each of these levels represents a former sea level. So as we date these levels, and we know that they're at a former sea level, then we are able to construct a relative sea level curve for this area. And what it shows is that over the last 7,500 years, sea level has been rising at a rate of about 30 centimeters a century. It also shows us with the deposition of these organic layers that the position of Lake Wallace, which had to be there for these organic layers to form, and the center of the island has remained the same, the same position over the last 7,500 years. Vibracore also makes the pulling out of drill pipes relatively simple. The key to vibracoring is that the vibrations eliminate friction on the drill pipe. If we had tried to pull this pipe out without the vibracore, we would have needed additional pulleys for added power to the winch. The hoisting ring is moved down the pipe, enabling continuous pulling of the pipe. The bottom piece of pipe is finally retrieved without the aid of the vibracore head.